So welcome to the 17th CII Mutual Fund Summit. I believe this is the first one we're doing in person after the pandemic. So you know, a round of applause for that. That's excellent. We're back here on ground. Mutual Fund Sahi Hai was um, a slogan which started, I believe, in 2017 to market the idea of mutual funds as a constant form of investments to a population that is in absolutely in love with their fixed deposits. Um, the pandemic, of course, wreaked havoc, but uh, it really did a lot to give a shot in the arm, at least for this asset class. And we've seen that happening in the spurt in AUMs in the last few years, 10x in the last five years, double, um, you know, in the last two years. And that has stood the test of time. That one marketing slogan has gone beyond just being a catchy thing of mutual fund sahi hai. We have the who's who of the industry with us today and it's going to be interesting to know at what juncture we stand at a time when now the idea of investing in a mutual fund has gone beyond the top cities, beyond a certain section of society, far into different parts of the country. So that's one big advantage. But we're also standing at a time which is going to be challenging economically for the globe for India, for savings and investments, what are the kind of preferences of investors we see and what are the challenges ahead? So let me begin with the Mr. Nilesha on your view of where we stand right now in terms of the mindset of investors towards mutual funds. So thank you CII for having me over here. And I really don't know where we are standing. But I know where we were and where we should be going. So when I was a kid, Hindi film me hamesha aise sin dekta tha ki larki ka baap apni pagdi dal deta hai kisi ke paon me ki meri ijjat aap ke paon me hai. That was my India where borrowing money to celebrate occasions like marriage or kids' education was needed. I want to go a scenario where aisa koi movie mein scene ho or suddenly hero aake bulta hai ye karne ki jarurat nahi hai aapne mutual fund mein investment kiya tha wo redeem karne aur bas wo journey ho jaye to humara dunya ho jaye ka and I think we are on the right course. In my previous organization, Excess Bank, there was a branch manager called Pradeep Agarwal in Delhi. So I used to tell everyone, ki SIP karo, SIP karo. And then he said, I have to SIP kar liya hai, meri betiyo ke liye kar liya hai, wife ke liye kar liya hai. So I said, abhi apki maid ke liye, driver ke liye karo. He did SIP for his driver and when he got transferred to Mumbai, driver stayed back in Delhi, but SIP was with this gentleman. Sometime back he came to give invite for his daughter's wedding and said if I can get that money. Pradeep Bhai just opened the app, punched the redemption and said, Sade char lakh rupay, kal do din ke andar aapke bank account mein jama ho jayega. When that guy was crying, khushi ke aasu the, because he sade char lakh rupay on ke liye badi baat hai. Second, do din mein paisa bank account mein mil jai, wo bhi usse badi baat hai. There are more than 1.8 crore Indians who have lost close to 2 lakh crore in just last 20 years in collective investment scheme. From PSCL of Nirmal Singh Bangu to City Limousine to so many others. We have to serve those people so that Hindi film may aise seen aane band ho jai. That's a new marketing campaign you've thought of and that we might see next. Um, let's talk about that. So there, there's no doubt it has changed lives. It will continue to change lives. Let me come to you, Mr. Chandok. Um, there's also no doubt that it has been a tough 20 to 22 odd months in the markets. Returns have been flat. People might not be very excited looking at what their SIPs are doing for them or their investments are doing for them. Is that pressure building up or is the concept of, you know, which has been drilled down, 
invest for the long term don't um, act in a knee jerk fashion is that enduring uh, thanks uh, tamanna and uh, thank you to cii for having me uh, for today's event uh, indeed uh, the uh, you know fantastic picture that uh, nidesh painted you know as he described the transformation that is happening uh, indeed is happening uh, when it comes to uh, the systematic investment uh, uh, side of uh, the mutual fund industry and we clearly seeing here that uh, despite difficulties in the last two years adverse returns this has only grown compared to where we were two years back where we are today uh, every few months i note that you know we hit a new record uh, so even as we speak we've just hit a new record of uh, the growth that is happening with respect to the systematic investments into mutual funds and it is thanks to this um, i would say experience uh, because you you cannot sustain just by a slogan or a campaign which does not back it up with performance so i think thanks to the experience and performance that the industry has delivered to the investors uh, that uh, there is confidence in this uh, uh, this kind of an offering and there is also confidence in the undertone underlying economy uh, of the country uh, eventually uh, if that does well only then the stocks will do well and mutual funds eventually will do well so i think it's it's a clear vote of confidence on the prospects of the country the manner in which the industry has uh, sort of given an experience to the investor uh, and uh, therefore month month despite uh, adverse period people are seeing this as a long term story for themselves and um, not probably using every uh, downtime and then we saw some data in the earlier session as well uh, redoubling their uh, commitments to the market so every time there is a sluggishness or a downturn we see uh, more and more investors coming in uh, redoubling and that's why sips are hitting record numbers um is it also a factor mr monot i will come to this of tina this is going to be a phrase everyone's going to talk about for the next one year there is no alternative uh does you know we're going into election season so tina is going to be the catch phrase is it also tina as far as um, sips and mutual funds are concerned over time consistently post tax returns uh, which has showed up confidence and is there a bit of a threat to that tina with interest rates back up again we have seen those cycles many times but what has happened for us in the industry nilesh bhai narrated their story the most heartening thing we get as an industry whenever we travel across the country is meeting these kind of people who did 1000 2000 5000 rupee per month of sip and today when they are able to see a statement with lakhs of rupees in, in their account and then we get that story uh, every day as as nilesh pai narrated so three or four things that have happened which has led to this substantial increase in the trust the total sips 5 years back for 7000 crores it took us 20 years of hard work for the industry to reach a mark of 7000 crore or close to a billion dollar in last 5 years we have doubled that from 7000 to 14000 crores the number of sips have gone from 60 lakh 10 years back to 6 and 1/2 crores today it's a 10x increase and anu showed those numbers how millennials on across all all strata of society you are seeing that what has really worked for us are three or four things the number one is the track record now people have seen interest rate cycles people have seen economic cycles business cycles political cycles global i think ups and downs what we have seen recently we have seen many times but now you have funds going back 10 15 20 25 30 30 years next year hdfc balance advantage would be like 30 years flexi cap another years time two years time will be 30 you have got 25 30 years of track record across all these ups and downs of what the wealth that has got created second is the trust because of the transparency thanks to the regulation and the industry put together this is the most transparent financial product in the world you don't get this kind of transparency what we disclose on a daily basis or a monthly basis is of a different order altogether and third i think is technology what anu showed that how easy it has become to invest or or maybe a uh, uh, transact and thanks to the efforts of of people sitting uh, next to me I think some of these things are on top of that the mutual fund sahiya campaign and the two basis point all of us uh, very seriously uh, spending on like how do we really go to the every nook and corner of the country and convince people that 
uh, if you don't do this, how are you going to create wealth over a long period of time? So this is the year in Amrit Kal, first year, India will become the most populous country in the world. We have always been the largest democracy in the world. This is the year we are also getting the crown of the most populous nation in the world. But imagine in 10 or 20 or 30 years time, if we don't focus on ensuring that there is a wider equity participation, how are we going to take care of the older age people, right? So we have to work together and take this to a much higher level and move beyond thinking about where the interest rates would be next one or two quarters, what will happen to the GDP, what will happen to the corporate earnings or so on and so forth. We have to take that leap of faith that in love, what we have done as a nation and economy in the last 25 years, next 25 years in the Amrit Kal are only going to get better. And we have to ensure that from 3.75 crore unique investors today, we take it to 10x in the next 10 years. We, we already are officially uh, the most populous country in the world. And you're absolutely right. Uh, we are going to have to figure out a way to also support the expanse of that population. That's where SIPs come in. Mr. Kulkarni, I want to come to you on the changes you've seen in the mindset of the investor pre and post pandemic. I mean, that's sort of a watershed landmark for people for a lot of things. They decided to change, people decided to change their lives, their outlook on things. Did it also impact an outlook on investments? And did you see the effects of that? Okay, so once again, thank you, CII, for getting me on this panel. And so to answer your question, I don't think pandemic has much to do with the change of behavior. I think it's more to do with the fact that uh, the overall knowledge level across the industry uh, from retail investors to HNI's investors have really gone up substantially. Uh, I think today information is available freely. People do read a lot. Gone are the times when you would go to a customer and say buy this and he would buy it blindly. Today the client does ask you many, many questions because he or she is also prepared to uh, decide where they want to invest the money. So the big change that I see is that Five years back, maybe, the vision was more short-term oriented. Today, the vision is much more long-term oriented. People are actually talking about SIPs earlier would be signed up for five years or ten years or three years. Today, SIPs are being signed for lifetime. So that's a big change. They are willing to commit for their future generations. Uh, what possibly insurance tells you to do, that's their surrogacy, they are doing it through the mutual fund route today. I, I, we talk to a lot of clients, MNHIs, uh, normal, common customers when they come for investor awareness programs. Today, it's heartening to note that people are not saying that agar market gir gaya, to mein paise nikalo kya. They are willing to say that if market gir gaya, to aisa suna hai ki hume jyada unit milte hai. So I think the whole concept and the behavior of people has changed substantially. And to that extent, I think that is the single determining factor why uh, more clients are coming into the industry uh, and also the fact that they are willing to stick on for a much longer time. And just taking what Namneet said is very important. They have realized that this industry has gone through multiple cycles, not just economic, political, social, all kinds of ups and downs. And they have seen that this industry has given a return which is very, very good. And that's something which is driving. So when they go and tell 10 other people, why haven't you invested in mutual fund? Today, the acceptability of them putting in the money or writing a check is much higher than what it was five years back. I mean, I'd just like to add one point. Uh, I think uh, you said that are they competing and therefore no options. But I think increasingly as investors are getting mature, we are seeing that they look at asset allocation as an approach. So a fixed income is not the same as a mutual fund, particularly the equity-oriented ones. So it's a it's an allocation towards uh, you know a fixed income or a bit of their total revenue, total uh, investments, and then uh, the rest of it goes into mutual fund. So it's an not an or it's an uh, and uh, scenario. Um, I think the big challenge, perhaps the big challenge, uh, perhaps. Let me come to Mr. Nadella on this. Uh, Four mutual funds came from a breed of investors who suddenly found themselves working from home with a lot of time and with a DIY mindset who, who said that maybe I can, 
you know put in the research put in the effort and have more returns than what my mutual fund is giving me what my current sips is giving me uh do you think that that phase is over or is it very much there and persisting thank you tamanna thank you sandeep thank you cia um See the DIY culture is here to say is uh, uh, what we believe uh, the upwardly mobile uh, and the millennials uh, you know are far more attuned to technology uh, and uh, and it is not to say that the pre millennials were not and I think you know they are just as adept in using technology as the rest of us have been over a period of time I think the tools uh, the tricks of the trade that are now so commonly available uh, on almost every platform I guess in varying degrees of uh, effectiveness you know provide a pretty level playing field for anyone to invest and i think the point fully is in my mind less to do with you know people who want to invest get that far to actually a platform they will invest any which way even if not they can be a drop off of 5 or 10% but i think the larger problem is how do we get more people to that particular you know pipeline right i guess what i'm trying to say is that you know we're still about 3 and 1/2 crore unique investors you know we are very far uh growth rates of 20% increase in portfolios and all may look pretty impressive but definitely not when we look at the potential to grow in terms of the population the investable populace that we have in this country versus you know what we have invested thus far and i think that's probably what uh, one of the things that we need to address is effectively leverage technology not just for onboarding and retention and stopping the detractors from moving away that i think in a way is happening in a reasonably effective manner But the idea is how do we get the next 20 30 40 crore people to that particular pipeline to start using technology right and that i think is an area where as an industry we all still have to collectively do a lot i think it's been almost uh, 10 12 years since the advent of moocs uh, which is effectively you know uh, massive online courses how do we get the youngsters right from the college uh, you know right from the, uh, you know uh, time when they actually are getting literate not just study about science and social but also about financial literacy and if we don't get the individuals at that point in time gone to the importance of financial investing not just saving i think we're going to uh, you know miss a massive amount of people because then you're going to only find those people who genuinely have interest to invest in which way so broadly speaking i think you know it's about getting the next 30 40 crore people to look at this industry even before they start investing there are tools to invest right and that's the first one and the second one i think is not to be myopic in our view that you know sorry i'm probably being a little contrarian you know i think you know kudos to this industry has done tremendously well but i there is still potential to do a lot more i think one such area is probably not to be myopic to think that there is no competing asset class you look at world over uh, one of the reasons why the us and you know particularly the us there's been a marked decline in the mutual fund industry growth percentages it used to grow at a factor of 5.8% now it's down to a little around 2.5% you know projected for the next 5 to 7 years that's not because people lost interest in mutual funds but there are a lot of competing asset classes you know which uh, you know have been winding the interest of an investor now in india probably we're not there with every one of them for example you can buy fractionalized art you may not have the ability to buy a picasso but you can buy two units of a picasso's art that's possible in the us you can buy music rights of your favorite singer because you know you can earn royalties for the next 30 years or and so forth you can invest in pre ipo shares you can invest in the vc funded investments now these are all the asset classes that have been winding the west now is that something very far away in india you know probably not i think you know we shouldn't be thinking that you know sip and mutual fund is going to be the only other and for now it is what i'm saying is i think you know we need to find ways and means to get a lot more people attracted to the industry well before other asset classes come in and keep an absolute eye in terms of what are the competing classes which can actually also take mutual funds at what's what's on your horizon when you talk about competing asset classes because uh one of them that i i don't even know if i can say it competed but uh the whole crypto phase it it came and went with one budget announcement it, that industry sort of the interest in it evaporated overnight with the regulatory fear and we are a very tightly regulated market and there seems to be no signs that that will change anytime soon so i'm just interested in knowing when you say that they could other competing asset classes is there anything specific in mind you see on the indian horizon sure see cryptos is a very different ball game altogether okay it's uh, uh, you know it's it's not the same as the asset classes such as for example reits and invits where you can have fractionalized 
ownership on you know large properties right and infrastructure projects which otherwise you cannot by yourself own similarly you extend the logic to other fractionalized investment opportunities such as art that i was talking about or music uh, or pipo shares etc which can easily be traded you know it's not so easy in india at this point in time but you can easily do so in the rest of the world right so there are other legal asset classes which are not yet that popular in india which can become popular now that may not be the asset class most of us in this room could be very interested in for, for a foreseeable future but we can't say the same thing about the millennials because they have a long tenure of investment life ahead of them and they are risk taking they chase higher alpha and i think as an industry we need to brace ourselves to you know get to that stage you know where that might happen and then we are ready to take that head on come on say because you asked a diy question i have something to say uh diy is good but assisted diy is better okay and let me give you an example when the market goes from let's just take a random number 30000 to 20000 you need a shoulder to cry on you can't cry with your head on a computer laptop okay let's be very clear so so i think what karan does in ifl yeah that's assisted dyi okay and that's the model which i think everybody especially the millennials and new people who like to play with the gizmos should really be looking at assisted dyi suddenly giving the sense that no one here is a millennial or likes to play with gizmos some might take offense to that but it's a good uh, segue for me to speak to karan lot of people crying on your shoulders last couple of years it's question or observation that's <laughs> question mark inflection of a question mark at the end of that sentence no so i think uh, honestly uh, investors are very well in the sense you always have new investors but overall investors are matured and i think if you just look at the last 25 years if you go back to 97 and assuming one of us is in nostradamus in this room hopefully we can find somebody and somebody predicted in the year 97 that 99 the tech meltdowns going to happen 2001 wtc attacks are going to happen 2003 parliament attacks are going to happen 2000 8 2611 gfc global financial crisis 2013 currency tapering now covid we can keep going on as somebody told us all of this in the year 97 i think uh, you know i'm a marwadi from calcutta i would have hidden my money in my pillows and gone to sleep right as somebody told me in the next 25 years all of this is going to happen and at the end of 25th year for 2 years nobody will be able to get out of the house reality all of this has happened in the last 25 years all the volatility has come through and yet on investments broadly we ended up Somewhere in the region of 10-11 percent post tax. So I investors get it. They've seen life for the last 25-30 years. They've seen the volatility. Uh, obviously, tools for asset allocation, disproportionate amount of risk need to be there. But I don't think so. People kind of just lose their sleep over uh, uh, over. Uh, obviously, there's a really sharp correction from 30,000 to 20,000, and people have gone and put in their entire 100 rupees into equities at that point in time. There can be a little bit of calming which is needed but uh, overall i think it's a good space and i think generally speaking to be fair i think india in 2023 is very different from india in 2009 uh, the maturity of the investor is very very different um mr monty uh, just right now uh, current listed a whole laundry list of terrors in the last several years um there are some predictions that 2024 2023 2024 is going to be the onset of a global recession let's hope that's a completely wrong prediction but we're already seeing a sort of a variation in the way indians spend the number of people buying luxury cars the pace of that growth is much higher than those buying two wheelers for example uh, luxury apartment sales sell out in an hour but uh, affordable housing is still struggling when we're all talking in this room about expanding reach broadening the market do you see a challenge there see let's reflect what's happened and if we go back to current statement as to 2009 if somebody would have said this i would have also kept my money in in the bank or in my house not the bank itself but you know there is now a different world there used to be before christ and after christ it is now before covid and after covid that's the reality okay now if somebody would have told me that there is a virus which is ruling the world and we are shut in our houses because this is now stopped the economic activity of the world at one go even world wise also this had not happened this is what has happened in two years we were sitting in our houses scared for our life that's like a science fiction movie trust me the transfer world will come now some day 
that's my belief okay but all of us have got this chance to reflect on our lives in at, in our small spaces in our houses and in mumbai it's even smaller uh, uh and we've come out of it in a very different vigor towards life we've got this chance to restructure our financial statements or how we want to live life and that's why this is an outcome right today the mumbai airport is looking like a bus stop right and 2 years ago we were wearing masks so people have looked at it very differently and from medical insurance to mutual funds their approach to every investments is very different we are talking about 3 and a half crore folios if you break that down into 26 years of mutual fund and one year of mutual fund it was 2 and a half crores and 1 crore and let's project the next 10 years we are talking about 60% of world population under 30 in this country and that's where the thing comes in my son who is 24 i am afraid will stand up and say that you don't have a single product for me and somewhere what shikant is saying is something which we need to reflect we are not the only people waiting for investments to come but we can become the only investment vehicle because we can become tina because we can give all these asset classes through us we are a pass through vehicle if we stand as a biased manufacturer catering to the needs of the investor the distribution landscape today is skilled enough to give it to them it is not a distribution landscape which was there in 2009 their knowledge level their approach towards investing is totally different so it's up to the manufacturer now to remain very unbiased and understand this change in demography and if we can cater to that in a rightful fiduciary manner we can become tina is my firm belief 